In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on Tactics. Chaplain's Report this morning comes from the book of Daniel. We're continuing our series on Daniel. And for those of you who haven't been paying attention or just didn't catch the Chaplain's Report yesterday for whatever reason, Daniel and his friends have been praying for their lives. So the king is angry, he's mad that nobody can interpret his dream, and because he is angry and because the magicians and the wise men have failed him, he's decided, you know what, I'm just going to off all of them, just going to take all of them out. And then Daniel steps up and says, wait, that doesn't make any sense, why is he going to kill all of us? And he says, because nobody can interpret his dream, and he tells him the situation, Daniel goes, oh, I'll do it, I can interpret dreams, that'll be fine. And so... When that happens, Daniel and his friends get together and pray that um, that he'll be able to do this, that he'll be able to interpret the king's dream, and that he'll be able to save everyone's life. And that's really where we end up. And so that's kind of setting the stage for this particular verse in Daniel 2, 19 through 23, where he offers this prayer. Then the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel said, Let the name of God be blessed forever and ever, for wisdom and power belong to him. It is he who changes with the times and epochs. He removes the kings and establishes kings. He gives wisdom to wise men and knowledge to men of understanding. It is he, it is he that reveals the profound and hidden things, he knows what is in the darkness and the light that dwells within him. To you, O God, of my fathers, I give thanks and praise, for you have given me wisdom and power. Even now you have made known to me what is requested of you, for you have made known to us the king's matter. So what we see here is David giving a praise of uh, giving a prayer of praise and a praise of of thanksgiving. So what he starts out with, if you're looking at that particular prayer that he offers. God has revealed this thing to him. He is very grateful for it. He recognizes that only God could do this. That's something that we talked about that even the Chaldeans realize, that no man could just know the king's dream and know the interpretation, and it would require a God to do so. And that's exactly who Daniel went to. He got together with his friends and prayed that this interpretation would take place, and then it was revealed to him in a night vision. And so because of that, Daniel is giving praise to God and his power for being able to do this, where it talks about all wisdom and power belongs to him, and it is you who changes the times and epochs and removes kings. See, that's the thing. Daniel gets who's in charge. Daniel understands it. He knows that it's not him, and it's not Nebuchadnezzar. He understands that God sent Nebuchadnezzar this dream, and then he sent the interpretation of this dream to Daniel. God is up there pulling all the strings. Not as though he's a puppet master that he's forcing anybody to do this, but through his divine providence, he is making things work out for the good of all by allowing these things to take place. He's working for the good of Nebuchadnezzar and for Daniel, and that's the way that he works in our lives. That It's not as though he's, when I say he's pulling the strings, it's not as though he is manipulating us into something that we have to do, but he is setting us up for things. He is setting us up for success, and not just to benefit ourselves, but to benefit all of those around us. And that's exactly what God is doing with even the pagans surrounding him, like the Chaldeans or King Nebuchadnezzar. He is working good through Daniel and allowing him to display his mighty power to everybody else. And because of that, Daniel understands where these gifts of dream interpretation really come from, and that it's not King Nebuchadnezzar that's really in charge. God is really the one calling the shots here. And he also gives in verse 22 this acknowledgement of his infinite wisdom, talking about how he reveals these amazing, profound, hidden things. And another thing that he talks about, too, that is really fascinating is he says at the end of verse 22, and the light dwells with him. Not that he dwells in the light or that he is the, the creator of light, all of which would have been true, but he's saying the light dwells with him. So what I'm questioning here is, 
prophecy? Because we know that, especially in the Gospel of John, Jesus is referred to the light over and over again. That is a name that is given to the Christ. And he says, light dwells with him as though it was some kind of living being or some kind of entity. Is Daniel here asserting, even though he may not even have realized it when he was doing so, is he giving a prophecy also about the Christ? That he's saying, this is a God who light dwells with him. Sounds to me like at least it's possible you could read it this way that he's also talking about acknowledging the existence of his son in this prayer. And since Daniel is a prophet, then it would certainly be appropriate for him to do that, even if he didn't realize he was doing it at the time. And Daniel is also thankful. You'll notice at the end there in verse 23, he's talking about he's giving all this thanks and praise for all the mighty things and wonderful things that God has done in this, he understands that God is the reason he was able to receive this vision. God is the reason he's able to save himself and his friends and all the magicians. And because of that, he owes a debt of gratitude to God the Father. So you see that in all things, Daniel prayed. Originally, when he heard this was going on, he and his friends got together and prayed for help. And then when the thing was accomplished and God did what was requested of him, in the prayers of Daniel and his three friends, then he comes and he prays for praise and thanksgiving, giving thanks to God for all the ma amazing things that he's done. And so that really is, I think, a model for us to follow. That when we're about to go through something big, we pray. When God helps us through it, we don't forget. We also pray then. A lot of times, especially when we're desperate, we remember to pray and ask for God's help then. But sometimes we forget to say a prayer of thank you when he's gotten us through it. And so I think the model here is that we need to constantly be in a mode of prayer, that we constantly need to be in contact with God as one of his children. And that's something that Daniel understands and acknowledges, and he lives his life that, that way. And that is the way that we as Christians need to live our life as well. We need to lead a life where prayer is an integral part of everything we do. Stay the course, friends. <laughs> You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. What's that? Oh, you want to know what the content's going to be? You want to know what's in it? No, 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 it's like Obamacare. So you got to subscribe to find out what's in it.